So this 18-year-old from Idaho arrested over the weekend for conspiring to attack churchgoers in his own town and do it all in the name of ISIS. Alexander Mercurio has now been charged with providing material support to a foreign terrorist organization. Investigators with the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force say that they foiled his plan to attack at least one local church with guns, knives, and flammable chemicals. We're joined now by Josh School, Josh, a former senior executive at the FBI. Boy, this is quite a headline. Man pledges to allegiance to ISIS, plans an attack on Idaho churches, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, which is a beautiful place where he's from. He was going to go after the churches there. Your, your reaction? Well, I think this is what the FBI does, Connell. They disrupt plots across the United States all the time. I'm glad News Nation is covering it, this important work. It's scary. The terrorism threat has not gone away uh, just because we are tracking other threats to our, our great nation. It brings up, I'm glad you said that at the beginning, because it does bring up this wider point, which I wanted to ask you about anyway, about how prevalent this still is, something we used to talk about post 9-11 a lot. I'm wondering how prevalent it is now. News Nation contributor uh, Tracy Walder was on with Marnie Hughes earlier talking about how the FBI did its job or may have done its job in this case. Let's watch. This was very, very controlled. And my guess is they probably wanted to get as much information out of him as possible um, in terms of other connections to other individuals who are self-radicalizing here in the United States. Which leads me to my next question. How often is ISIS recruiting and looking to radicalize people here in big and small communities in the U.S.? I don't mean to be trite uh, with my answer, Marnie, but the answer is all day, every day. All day, every day. Josh, what do you say? So I think ISIS has been reduced in their footprint. There is a ton of radicalization material online for which, unfortunately, individuals in our communities consume for a variety of reasons, looking for an outlet, looking for something to belong to. And unfortunately, they go down this uh, path. Sometimes you can get to save them before they go down a complete path to radicalization. And certainly as far as this uh, young man went to, to almost conducting an attack. But the terrorist threat is real. You see what's going on across the world, whether it's in Yemen, Iran, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and then, of course, in Syria. It, it is troubling, and many people, many of these folks feel a calling to this type of terroristic activity. And it's going on across the United States, unfortunately. So the FBI doesn't have to go searching for it when they go into groups like this, right? I mean, I'm sure you've heard the discussion or I don't know, accusation is the right word over the years that there's some sort of coercion going on where maybe because they're undercover agents working with someone, they then become radicalized. But I assume you would say that's not the case. I would say that's not the case. There's very strict guidelines put out by the attorney general. And when I was running domestic operations for the counterterrorism division many years ago, there were thousands of these cases, these types of cases. Not all of them were aligned directly overseas. I imagine this gentleman come out as a lone wolf that pledged allegiance to ISIS. Thankfully, that we are very lucky that he was speaking to law enforcement as opposed to an ISIS recruiter. Uh, and, and they were able to get him in custody and controlled before something bad happened in Coeur d'Alene. Yeah, to that point, you, let's look at what he was saying, because we have some of the quotes that he's given to, um, I guess, the law enforcement officials here. I'll put some on the screen. Here they are. I'm going to perform a martyrdom operation very soon. The targets will be the various churches in my town and stop close by the church, equip the weapons and storm the temple, killing as many people as possible. These are the messages that he was sending to you know, somebody he didn't know was an FBI source, but was Josh an FBI source. So what's the balance there when you're working on a case like this of when you act? You know, obviously, you don't want to, to your, you just said it, you, want to, you don't want to let anything bad happen, but you need enough, you know, information and, and evidence, right? You do need evidence, and you need to take furtive steps to, to go after an attack. Rhetoric often does not just get it done. Lots of people talk a big game online, and it's a fine line. And I'll tell you something else, Connell, it takes a lot of resources and there's some judgment that goes into it to make sure that the person isn't going to take steps that are not controlled or not viewed or not witnessed or most importantly prevented by law enforcement. And what you have is the FBI has these joint terrorism task forces that are not just FBI agents, but law enforcement officers. And the testimony in this case was was a law was a police officer in the area that was part of the terrorism task force. So, so you have to have does, something actionable. Resources. Is that what you're saying? You have to you know, it can't be just you can't be just postings online, but you have to really have reason to believe they're going to take action. Otherwise, you can't really charge them with this as much as you would want to. Right. That is absolutely accurate. And it's frustration sometimes. Sometimes these cases take a long time to materialize. Sometimes people back away.
Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.